Hey guys and welcome back to Schneids 15. Uh, so today this is going to be our last video of the uh, electrical diagnostics for uh, ignition and charging at least. Um, and it's the CDI so a lot of you guys are probably wondering how I'm going to test this thing. Um, I've done a lot of research on the manual, done a lot of uh, looking. It gives you some resistance tests in it really to, uh, to test the CDI but it says that you shouldn't test it with a multimeter because you can ru ruin the diodes inside and uh, there's some other uh, rectifiers in there. And there's a bunch of stuff in there that you can ruin so it suggests not to do that. So I wouldn't risk it if and just in case it was good. Uh, so basically I'm going to show you the location of the CDI, how to change it, and uh, just show you how I would diagnose it. So for me to diagnose it, I would go to my stator testing video and uh, I would watch that. I'll put a link up here. Uh, you can, I go through all the steps there. So you're going to be testing the voltage coming out of your stator, uh, the resistance and stuff, um, your pickup coil voltage, if or uh, resistance. If all that stuff checks out good, we know that our stator and our pickup coil is good. So everything down in the engine internally that makes the spark um, or makes produces the voltage and, and uh, triggers or uh, um, the pickup coil or trigger, whatever you want to call it, tells it when to spark. Um, if all that's good, we, we know that the next thing it goes through is our uh, CDI. Then it comes from our CDI to our uh, ignition coil and our ignition coil sparks. So my suggestion on how to test it guys is test your stator and your pickup coil and make sure it's working right. As per my last uh, video that I made, it's in the King Quad 300 playlist if you did, if you missed the link. Um, and then test our uh, ignition coil and if our ignition coil is all working fine, all of our resistance readings are perfect, but you still don't have spark, then I would check wiring, but most likely um, you're just going to have to replace your CDI. So uh, it's pretty s simple to replace. I'll show you where it is. And uh, that's going to be pretty well it for this video, guys. It's That's how I would personally, if it was my own ATV, even a customer's ATV, that's how I would test it. I wouldn't, there, the Suzuki manual even states right in it that if you bring it into the dealer, uh, that they will use the change out method to test if your CDI is broken. So basically they have one on the shelf that they've invested in or well, probably not invested in. They're probably just using one out of the stock room that they plug in and if it's got spark, they bill you first for a CDI. And uh, if it doesn't, they go on to something else, but that's a quick and easy way for them to diagnose it without uh, charging too much labor. I mean, you're probably still going to charge an hour minimum, but it's it's a quick way for them to make some money. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty well it for diagnosing that. You have to have a special Suzuki diagnostic tool to plug in that will fit in the connector, and you can test it. But um, if you get in there with your multimeter, they're all male lens. I think there's six of them, and you can mess some stuff up in there by... Uh, uh, testing it that way and uh, you can short across the pins and I, I it's not worth it guys for the price of the CDI so uh, let me show you where it is and uh, if you th if everything else checks out okay start stator wise and uh, wiring and uh, uh, ignition coil wise I would go ahead and uh, replace your CDI unit so come down to the front uh, right side of your ATV and come behind your wheel. Let me get my camera up in here. I get a light in there. So, right up there, guys. Uh, you should be able to see it there now. Right where that electrical connector is there, and that's your CDI right there. So, um, that's how you get to it. You don't. Suzuki tells you that you have to pull off your uh, fender front front uh, whole thing your front fairing or front uh, plastics. You don't have to do that, guys. Uh, those are uh, 10 mil or eight millimeter bolts. There's one right there and one on the other side. 
all you gotta do is you can bend this one back, this piece of plastic back, get in there with a wrench. Um, I'll zoom in here. Right there, you can get on that one. Um, you can unplug that plug. And then uh, you can, it's tricky, but you can reach back in from the other side. We'll, uh, we'll come over there now. Come right in here. You can see the bottom of it there. And right there's our other bolt. You can sneak in there, guys. And you can pull out that bolt. It might help if you pull off this. I've done it. Um, and uh, you can replace the CDI just like that. The trickiest thing is just uh, getting that back bolt out. Otherwise, it's all right behind that piece of plastic there, which... Uh, right there which you can easily pull out of the way all right guys well thanks for watching uh, that's how to uh, diagnose a CDI on a King Quad 300 basically test everything around it you're probably only gonna have maybe an hour into testing it at max for testing all your electrical components and if they all pass you know that your CDI is in the middle of it and that's gonna be your issue um, that uh, pretty well covers our uh, King Quad 300 ignition testing uh, videos and uh, we're done. I'm going to do some more uh, videos on electrical, on how to, uh, how to test other stuff and uh, I'm going to do one, one more actually just to isolate the CDI and uh, sh just in case you still don't have spark just because there can be other issues. Uh, but otherwise that's how to test all the components and now we're gonna go to all the other stuff in my next video. As always guys, thanks for watching and please give the channel a like and a subscribe. If my videos interest you, please click on my channel and check out my other videos.